Hello, Dominus and Submissives. I'm Master Zahn from Ontario, and today is lecture number 18, Gorn Lifestyle. Now, this is not a topic I was overly familiar with when I was first asked to cover it, but I had a couple of files on Gorn Lifestyle archived away in my digital archive, as well as a couple of the books that the lifestyle is based on. Gorn Lifestyle is based on a series of books by John Norman and is about strong, dominant men. First and foremost, the, those in the Gorn Lifestyle don't identify what they do as BDSM. Though they're still part of the kink and fetish subculture and community, they're still separate. One key difference is that those in the Gorn Lifestyle reject the idea of a scene. They engage in 24-7 dominant submission, power exchange and total power exchange dynamics. The sub is still called a slave, the dominant is still called master, but it's an ongoing life. From a BDSM point of view, it would be like one scene that never ends. Those in a 24-7 dynamic of BDSM would probably be able to understand it easier than those not in a 24-7 dynamic. For the training of a slave in the gore lifestyle, position training, along with being parked training, seems to be some of the main focuses. Many of the poses used in the gore lifestyle are also used in BDSM, like the inspection pose, position one, or table, or any actual other number of them. The gore lifestyle is also more demanding and often stricter than a normal BDSM dynamic with less wiggle room for the submissive. With rejecting the idea of a scene, you don't find casual or bedroom dynamics in the gore lifestyle. That's just not what it's about. It's a more pure type of dominant submissive master-slave dynamic. Now, it's not that those in the BDSM community and dynamics can't approach a type of Gorn lifestyle or even have theirs be considered a Gorn lifestyle. It's just not the standard in the BDSM dynamic. In the Gore lifestyle also, slaves refer to all three men and women as master and mistress, although they only serve one master. While the slave is often considered property of the master, just like in the BDSM dynamic, love, care, and affection are still part of the whole lifestyle. There aren't many masters who would want their property to go unkempt or be uncared for. You can't show off a slave who isn't presentable. And if you don't care for your slave and take care of them, then you're going to end up with a slave who's unmotivated or unwilling to continue being a slave. Just like in BDSM, the slaves are still recognized as people with needs and wants and desires, lives of their own. Well, many of the females who are slaves in the Gorn lifestyle would be able to do dedicate themselves to a 24-7 lifestyle most of them still have lives and are let to go about and do their work and come home and then can pick up the dynamics from there. Another difference for the slaves from BDSM to Gorn Lifestyle is that the slaves in the Gorn Lifestyle don't use personal pronouns. I, me, mine. They say things like, this girl, this slave. Now, Gorn relationships are at the extreme end of service and obedience. Like with BDSM, though, the well-being of the master's property is always key in mind. Now, when I was researching the Gorn lifestyle, as I said, it's a bit stricter, I came across a report where police were called to a house because there was a woman being kept against her will. When they got there, they found a woman in shackles kneeling on the floor, but they found that she had consented to being the man's slave. He also had four other women from around the world who had come to be his personal slave. The police labeled it as a sex cult, and in the end, had to leave them be. 
even for those in a BDSM dynamic, for those who don't have a 24-7 or total power exchange, this might seem like an extreme end of dominance and submission. But it's just another way to express a dynamic and caring and relationship. Having it stricter can actually help some people focus and maintain the dynamic to a higher degree than in just BDSM, where there would be rules and more leeway. No matter what kind of dynamic you have, it's always important to keep the well-being of your submissive in mind, whether you have a Gorn lifestyle or a BDSM lifestyle. Now, as Gorn lifestyle is based on a fictitious series, it's hard to find actual documentation of it going back very far because it's a fairly new concept. But, as things keep developing, I will try to update this video. I'm sure there's much more on Gorn Lifestyle that I've missed. If I can find a model, I would like to go over the poses for both Gorn Lifestyle and BDSM Lifestyle. Thank you for tuning in for this lecture. I'm Master Zahn. Please join me for the next.